Well, thanks for joining us on Nationwide today, the 31st of December, 2023. I am Ogoch Kuka Ona. You can follow this news live on our website at www.nta.ng/live, and also follow NTA on all social media platforms. It was a mix of the good, the bad and the ugly for the past sector in Nigeria as more rural communities get connected, emergence of new technologies, alternative sources and collapse of national grids causing temporary blackouts all played out in 2023. In a review of the sector, Ibrahim Dan Hamidu reports that optimism is growing among stakeholders as the sector has the best prospects now. In 2023, Nigeria experienced significant surge in renewable energy investments with solar projects leading the way. The government, in collaboration with the private sector, organizations and foreign investors, launched an ambitious initiative to leverage Nigeria's vast renewable energy potential. Solar power mini-grids were established in various regions, contributing to a cleaner and more sustainable energy mix. As there is a direct transmission of light or electricity from generation to transmission to distribution to customer, there must be a reverse transmission of liquidity from customer to distribution to transmission to generation so that generation companies can pay gas companies. Improving access to electricity for both urban and rural populations was a priority. The government implemented a major electrification program, improving transmission infrastructure and connecting remote communities to the grid. Special attention was given to previously neglected areas, resulting in transformative changes in the lives of millions of Nigerians. Government still subsidizes power. Tariffs should have been raised or increased. The Mr. President said, until we're able to achieve regular and incremental power supply, you can't even touch the tariff. The power sector faced challenges in 2023 related to transmission and distribution infrastructure. However, the government has launched initiatives to improve existing infrastructure networks in collaboration with international partners. Investments were made to expand transmission capacity and improve grid stability and reduce transmission losses all with the aim of ensuring a more robust energy distribution system nationwide. With, with um, you know, investment being made, it's hopeful that uh, maybe in the next few years we would have uh, full power and it will be the issue of OPNEPA will be, be a past. Uh, anyway, I've heard of uh, these issues over and over about the collapse of uh, the national grid. I know it's affecting a lot of people and uh, also it's affecting businesses. The system collapsed that uh, we witnessed was just for a few hours, but was very, very operational. It wasn't due to any strategic fault in the grid. So and immediately we witnessed it, our people went into operations and they made sure they arrested the situation and they restored power back to the entire country. The year 2023 brought significant milestones in the power and energy sector. The country's determination to address its energy deficit, diversify its energy mix, and transition to sustainable development demonstrates commitment to meeting the growing energy needs of its population. In Abuja, Ibrahim Nahamidu, NTA News. The National Assembly has passed the 2024 Appropriation Bill of 28.7 trillion Naira. This is the first time Nigeria's budget is passed on a weekend during a special sitting in the bicameral legislature. National Assembly correspondents Lami Ali and Mitaire Ikben take it up from here. This bill is now read for the third time and passed. 31 days after submission by the executive, the 2024 Appropriation Bill is now ready for presidential assent. The harmonized report from Senate Appropriation Committee was approved, which contained an additional 1.2 trillion naira. The closely and harmonious appropriation process, the exec executive further requests for additional funding and some item of expenditure to the committee, which were not included in the bill as submitted by the executive. 
There was also adjustments on the exchange rate. It's now 800 Naira to the dollar against the proposed 750 Naira. President of the Senate, Gatwin Lakpabu, reaffirmed commitments of the National Assembly to engender deliverance of good governance by working hand in hand with the executive. Our work doesn't end here. We will continue to labor diligently to ensure that the bill is promptly transmitted to Mr. President for its immediate assent, enabling its implementation to commence on January 1st, 2024. I also wish to express my deep appreciation to my esteemed colleagues for your patience. This selfless service, I must say, exemplifies the sacrifices that the National Assembly consistently makes for the progress and development of our great nation. Also, as the special plenary, Deputy President of the Senate, Baro Jibrin, and Senator Jimo Ibrahim raised motions on the demise of former Speaker House of Representatives, Gali Umar Abba, and the late Governor of Ondo State, Oluwa Rotimi Akiridolu. A minute silence was observed in honor of each of the deceased. The recent killings in Plata State also led the Senate to pass a resolution to invite security chiefs. Senators sympathize with victims of the heinous attack following a motion from Senator Diket Plank. After the passage of the budget, the Senate made a pledge that it will ensure that MDAs implement the 2024 appropriation. I'll now hand you over to my colleague, Mitare Ikpen. Thank you, Lami. The House of Representatives equally passed the 2024 appropriation bill of 28. 0.7 trillion naira, which was 1.2 trillion naira higher than the estimates the president presented to the House. I had opportunity to speak with the Chairman House Committee on Appropriation to provide further insight into the reasons for increase in the estimates. We had a meeting with the GOEs. We believe that um, their submission is not enough, so that um, they have agreed to increase their revenues to 700 billion. So when you agree that we are able to get that to 1.2 trillion, which we applied in capital. The MDS should not wait for the funds to be released. They should quickly swing into action as soon as the budget is signed. After one month of scrutiny, the House at the Committee on Supply passed the appropriation bill of 28.7 trillion naira. The House also approved President Tinubu's request for securitization of 7.3 trillion naira ways and means. Being the last sitting of the House for the year, Speaker Tajuddin Abbas, in closing remarks, says review of the Electoral Act 2022 will be priority in the new year. Mitaire Ikben, NTA News. Similarly, with the passage of the 2024 appropriations, what comes to the minds of some lawmakers is the level of implementation when finally assented to by the President. National Assembly correspondent Issa Mohammed spoke with a cross section of lawmakers on their expectations from the budget. Even though we received the budget very late, but we work vigorously and tirelessly to ensure that uh, we pass this appropriation bill into law today. We saw for the first time stability in the process. There was no tinkering with the budget process. The deficit remained 9 point something trillion. The crude oil benchmark <coughs> remained 77.96 dollar. What happened was that uh, the little bit adjusted the uh, the exchange rate from uh, 750 to 800 because of the reality on the ground with what is in the in the public market as you are aware. The budget is quite high and we believe that the more the better for Nigerians in terms of agriculture, food production. He said he wants a lot of food, food production so that hunger can be a thing of the past in the country in terms of education, works, infrastructure and all that. So we expect a lot of transformation in 2024. We stayed here for over five hours as you can see or, or thereabouts and we, we make sure that the budget has been passed today and uh, we hope the executive will sign it in January and the ball is now in their court to implement it. And now to election matters. Chairperson of Liberia's National Elections Commission, 
NEC, David Etta Brody Lansana, has acknowledged the pivotal technical support rendered by INEC Nigeria and Professor Mahmoud Akubu in establishing a workspace and bolstering the electoral process in Liberia. While dedicating a workspace for staff of INEC, in Liberia to Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, the Liberian NEC chairperson commended Nigeria for sustaining Liberia's democratic journey so far. Professor Mahmoud Yakubu acknowledged NEC Liberia for the honor bestowed upon INEC Nigeria and emphasized the value of the resource in enhancing the operational capabilities of staff particularly through information technology facilities. Professor Yakubu recalled INEC Nigeria's assistance during Liberia's 2017 presidential election and highlighted the joint efforts of its experts from INEC and NEC Liberia in addressing stakeholders' concerns regarding the voters' register towards a huge free exercise. He underscored the complexity of election management and urged prioritizing peer support amid limited resources and escalating election costs. All right, taking stock of events that defined the year 2023, citizens say it is a year of mixed feelings for Nigerians as it was inundated with several trials. Citizens are already rolling out resolutions with hope of a better experience in 2024. Ifoma Aihoje reports. Inflation, according to these residents of Yanagua, continued to soar high through 2023, some steps to as much as 500% over the previous years. Then, subsidy was taken off PMS media, and the price of the product jumped up to approximately 650 naira. These also came with increased transportation costs and effects on prices of commodities in the market. All this, Nigerians lament, brought untold hardship. After the flood of last year, we are thinking now oh, this year is going to be good. The next thing, boom, everything shoot up. Everything is like double, double. It's, it's been tough, but God has been helping us. God has been helping us. But it's, it's, it's not been an easy year. That is why I'm pleading with our labor head there, because I am a civil servant, that they should plead with the president. Let them bring down the fair price to normal. From there, things will be better. Regardless of all that befell Nigeria as a people and a nation, some still have overriding conviction of a positive side of the coin. To me, I call it the best year ever. We have got trained us, taught us how to manage, how to endure hardship, how to endure pains. But 2024 shall be greater than this year in all sector in this country. To fortify themselves to face the year ahead, therefore, Nigerians are talking about personal boat solutions by way of New Year resolutions. Uh, next year, we are going to try to put more effort than we put this year. We are trying to achieve best, more than we achieved, achieved this year. To improve on myself, what I couldn't achieve this year, I'm hoping to achieve it with the help of God. I'm anticipating 2024 to be a good year for me and my family for Bayelsa State. While you make resolutions, remember to consider them as goals so that you can concentrate on achieving them. In Yanagoa, Ifoma Aihoji, NTA News. In the meantime, Nigerians have continued to commend President Balak Tinubu's free train ride for the festive period as a decision which has brought succor to them. They stated this during a visit to Monia train station in Ibadan. Lukman Hassan tells us more. At the train station, families could be seen making last efforts to catch up with the train to go celebrate the new year with their loved ones. They noted that if not for the president's kind gesture of the free train ride to their various destinations, they would not have been able to travel for the Yuletide season. The advantage makes journey to be easier during this festive period. And we really appreciate his efforts. He really tried for us. I think it's a very good um, uh, policy and uh, initiative um, because it will um, help people to have uh, some more disposable income. It will be recorded that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu declared a free train ride to Nigerians on the 21st of December to January 4th. So this is to enable Nigerians to celebrate the Christmas and the New Year with their families across the country to cushion the effect or cost of transportation in the country. In Ibadan, Lukman Hassan, NTA News. 
And now Lagos residents are optimistic that the year 2024 will be a new opportunity for the country to renew commitment in achieving its developmental goals. They stated this while speaking with Larry Beleye on their hopes and preparations to usher in the new year. It's a Sunday morning and the last day of the year 2023. Christians are in their worship centers observing this last Sabbath of the year while some have started activities lined up for the new year. To go and spend the crossover night. You know, New Year, this 2024 is going to be a great year for us. For 2024, these are my expectations. Peace for Nigeria, good governance, and happiness all over. Good business that our children will find work to do. We are hoping to get a better life compared to what we had in the 2023. Security personnel are in strategic areas in the metropolis with the commission of police assuring people of a crime-free New Year celebration. Uh, for the New Year 2024, my assurance is that it will remain peaceful. We will not allow hoodlums to take advantage of any of us. We protect all citizens. Although the usual hustle and bustle on the streets of Lagos has waned considerably, some stores are still open for a last-minute shopping. In Lagos, Larry Bilayi, NTA News. And from Lagos, we'll be go jo going to Joss for more reports on Nationwide. And Mary is our guide. To Joss. Inspector General of Police says the era of unprovoked attacks on innocent citizens by criminal elements will soon be over. The police chief stated this on a visit to Bocos, one of the local government areas in Plateau State that came under attack by unknown gunmen, leaving scores dead. Caleb Goching has the report. The IGP who arrived to Bocos in company of top-ranking police officers expressed dismay over the extent of destruction. He described the attack as an unwarranted violence on innocent people, and the force, in synergy with other security agencies, will work assiduously to ensure that such incidents do not recur. He called on the people not to focus their attention on any particular tribe or religion, but see it as the handwork of mischief makers who should be confronted headlong. We have um, increased our deployment. I have given directives for deployment of tactical units to go into those affected areas and those other areas that are vulnerable. We, I have specific instruction of Mr. President to fish out the perpetrators of this dastardly act. Leaders of the community appreciated the visit with an appeal for more proactive measures to curtail the attacks. The coming of the Vice President and that of the IG uh, suggests that the government uh, is serious about bringing lasting peace in Bocos local government. I quite appreciate the government. Now that the Commission of Police is here, it's, it's going to take a proactive action of which we will come to that decision. The IGP had earlier visited the Paramount ruler Bongom Jos Da Jacob Gyambuba in his palace, where the leader commended the president for his quick response. In Jaws, Caleb Gochin, and 10 News. Meanwhile, the Inspector General of Police has deployed special tactical team to Bokos and Barking Ladi local government areas to forestall further violence in the area. AIG Ebong Eibu, who is head of the tactical squad, represented the Inspector General of Police at the event held at police headquarters in Jos. Salaw Abdurrahman Mohammed has details. These are the tactical squad drawn from various squadrons around the country with the sole purpose of restoring peace and stability in communities that were recently under attack in Plateau State. Addressing the squad, head of the tactical team, AIG Ebong Ibio, said the mandate given to them by the Inspector General of Police is to calm the situation and neutralize any form of violence in and around the troubled villages and assured that the battle against terrorism will be won. We must dominate every part of Plateau State and ensure that 
what happened before doesn't happen again. And we must also do our best to get those who perpetrated that drastic act. He further called on the personnel to be of best behavior and hold the ethics of the police in high esteem. He advised citizens to provide the necessary information that will help the operation and battle against insecurity. He further inspected the tactical assets sent by the IGP to aid in the operation. He deployed some men to that place. And now we are deploying more. In the evening we are deploying more. We must cover, dominate every area. And even beyond in Jos, Salah Abdurrahman Mohammed, NTA News. We'll now go on a break and uh, nationwide continues in Meduguri with Hassan Abubakar standing by after the break. We're glad to know that you are there. Nationwide now continues in Meduguri. Borno State Government has sealed the field office of a non governmental organization imam france with immediate effect the closure of imam francis field office followed a thorough investigation and subsequent confirmation that the ngo has been operating in the state without necessary registration and authorization from relevant authorities a statement issued by the state ministry of information and internal security says Borno State Government acknowledges humanitarian support of all legally registered and rule-compliant non-governmental organizations operating in the state, stressing, however, that the government operates a zero tolerance against erring entities. The statement notes that measures have been taken to ensure compliance with the law and to prevent further illegal activities of the organization as enshrined in the provisions outlined by the Borno State Agency for the Coordination of Sustainable Development and Humanitarian Response Law. The statement cautions all partners and personnel affiliated with IMAP France to note that access to the sealed premises is strictly prohibited and any attempt to tamper with or circumvent this action will be met with appropriate legal consequences. Furthermore, security agencies and concerned individuals are advised to remain vigilant with a view to preventing any activity being carried out by Imam France or its representatives within the state. The statement reiterates further that Borno State Government will continue to maintain vigilance on NGOs and international NGOs to protect public interest and preserve due processes. Away from that now to bring you some electoral matters. Borno State Independent Electoral Commission says the 20th January 2024 local government elections will hold as planned and all necessary arrangements to that effect have been concluded. Permanent Secretary of the State Electoral Commission, Abakari Balama, gave this clarification against the background of rumored postponement of the elections. Harris Mohammed Guni with the rest of the story. Acting Permanent Secretary of the Borno State Electoral Commission, Abba Kiari Balama, clarified that the 20th January 2024 deadline is sacrosanct, stressing that the Commission has never contemplated postponement or change in the planned date for holding the elections. We have finished preparations. The Executive Governor of Borno State, Professor Ogana Murazilom, has provided all the logistics we required. As up now, all our sensitive and non-sensitive material is on ground. We have recruited our ad hoc staff, we have recruited our attorney officers and the electoral officers. So all they are on the field now working and all our preparations is in top gear. Bosek's acting permanent secretary also noted collaboration with security agencies and other relevant stakeholders to ensure a hate free exercise across all the local government areas and use the opportunity to call on the citizenry to come out en masse and exercise their franchise. On 12th of January, God willing, we are going to start deploying both materials and election personnel to all the respective local governments. He noted importance of local government elections to Nigeria's democracy and assured all that the commission remains neutral and will create level playing ground for all. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, Antenus. You're on to Nationwide on the NTA. Let us at this point return to Ogochukuka in Abuja for more reports for us this evening. Happy New Year to you in advance. 
Happy New Year to you, Abu Bakr, in advance. Embarking in Abuja, in the face of dynamic challenges, the Nigerian Armed Forces demonstrated resilience and dedication to safeguarding the nation's security and fostering stability, but not without some hitches. This report from NTA's Defense Desk provides an account of the significant happenings in 2023, which will set the stage for Nigerian military operations in 2024. Acquisition of new platforms by the Nigerian Army, Nigerian Navy and Nigerian Air Force with plans for more in 2024, as well as a significant leaning towards the use of artificial intelligence, all characterize the Nigerian military's evolution in 2023. ability to churn out ideas to harness the power of technology will determine our success in ensuring the highest levels of operational effectiveness and efficiency. Similarly, a deep focus on artificial intelligence can revolutionize how we process data, analyze information, and make informed decisions in real time. Despite these successes, however, the military grappled with internal security challenges, including clashes with criminal elements and communal conflict, emphasizing the complexity of maintaining domestic peace. We have uh, observed the migration of uh, the criminal elements from the northeast to the northwest uh, zone of the nation and we are developing appropriate contingency to combat that threat. But the Nigerian Navy's journey is far from over. We face new and emerging challenges, including the dynamic threat of terrorism and the increasing sophistication of maritime criminals. We must remain vigilant and adaptable constantly improving our capabilities and strategies to stay ahead of the curve. Civilian casualties and displacement raised humanitarian concerns, prompting a need for a delicate balance between security operations and safeguarding the welfare of the local population. A case in point, the Tudumbiri incident, where civilians were killed in a case of missed target fire admitted by the Nigerian army. It shouldn't be our task, our mandate is to protect civilians, not to kill, maim or destroy anything. And that particular time, we're on the heat of pursuing some bandits within that general area. And unfortunately, this happened. The Nigerian Air Force suffered a few setbacks as well, recording three crashes in 2023, including a belly landing without casualties. As the year concludes, the Nigerian military stands at a crossroads, acknowledging achievements while addressing challenges to ensure a more secure and stable future. Naja Atutijani, NTA News. And still on security matters, Akwa Ibom State Police Command has apprehended 562 suspects for various crimes in the last three months. At the fourth quarter media briefing in New York, the Commissioner of Police, Olatoye Durosimi, says most of the suspects are already having their days in court. Clement Barikui reports. Offenses of those arrested within the last quarter of the year include pipeline vandalism and economic sabotage, armed robbery, murder, child trafficking, kidnapping, defilement, and rape. Log ran out of a two-man gang who used motorcycle to rob a POS operator of her mobile phone, POS machine, and 300,000 naira cash along Waniba Road, Uyo. A pastor who defiled a 16-year-old under the pretense of marriage and a youth corps member who raped a three-year-old child are also among those in the police net. We must be very careful about the people we employ to teach our children at home. Male teachers should be employed for male children, while female teachers are better for female children. Don't take anything for granted. Some of the suspects confessed to the crime. My big men, my little government, many of them, they only know us when, when it is time for election. On one that issue. In that very new government, we have so our company. Many of them don't want to even carry us along. For fishermen whose businesses have been stalled by activities of sea pirates, better days are here as CP Drusimi assured of renewed strategies by the police and sister security agencies following the donation of 14 gunboats to them by the state governments. In Uyo, 
Clement Barkui, NTA News. And in Kogi State, the police command has rescued 24 kidnapped victims abducted along the Ajaukuta Adogo Okene Road, including students and staff of Comprehensive High School Ajaukuta. The police public relations officer in Kogi State, SP Williams Oye Aya, says the area commander, Ajaukuta, in collaboration with the military and vigilantes, promptly responded to the incident. In the ensuing bushcomb, three victims, including our students, were rescued. CP Bertrand Onoha deployed additional tactical squad for an ongoing operation to rescue the remaining victims. In a confrontation with the criminals, a gun duel ensued, forcing the hoodlums to flee and abandon 21 victims, including 11 students and three teachers. CP Onoha commended the team's efforts and vowed to continue the onslaught against criminal elements in the state. He urges law abiding citizens to collaborate with the police by providing timely and credible information on criminal activities. All right, we'll now be taking a break. We'll be right back with more reports. Thank you for staying tuned. President Bola Tinubu has restated his determination to utilize the available resources to ensure lasting peace in the Southeast. He stated this while unveiling the logo of Peace in the Southeast project. Ifomando Kuli reports that the project is a strategic platform for the restoration of peace in the Southeast region, envisioned by the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Benjamin Kalu. Unveiling was part of the activities to mark the civic reception, thanksgiving and homecoming of the Deputy Speaker of Federal House of Representatives by his band, the people. President Tinubu, who was represented by the Vice President, Senator Kashim Shetima, noted that government is aware of the numerous challenges confronting the Southeast region and has devised means of addressing them. He commended the convener of the peace project for the initiative, which he noted is in tune with the realities in the region and in achieving enduring peace. We know that the Southeast has weathered too many storms, but the current economic stagnation has shaken the foundation of this beautiful region. And we are not going to sit back and watch the fire go beyond while we found it. Various speakers at the event regretted that Southeast, which used to be the fastest growing economy in Africa, is now faced with numerous security challenges and described the peace project as a platform to extend peace to other regions. We, the people of the Southeast, hereby declare that peace, that peace is what we stand for as a region. It is indeed a very welcome idea which must be commended. Anything that will bring peace in the southeast is very dear to all of us. I thank the deputy speaker and his team to prioritize education and awareness. There is one thing that connects all of us, and that is unity, and that is peace, especially because we are desiring progress. The event features symbolic release of pigeons as sign of peace, as well as confirmment of chieftaincy title of Omeziri Ibo on President Bola Tinubu. Peace in the Southeast Project, PISP, is a five-year peace building and development initiative designed to address the socio-economic challenges and security issues facing the Southeast region. From Ben, the local government area of Abja State, Ifoma Ndu Okole, NTA News. Our next point is Benin, Edo State, as we now link up with Obey, who is standing by. Obey, compliments, and uh, how is Benin today? Tuka Ona, nice to see you, and a very happy new year in advance to you. Governor Godwin Obasaki has signed six executive orders geared towards ensuring diversification of the state's economy to attract local and foreign investment in the state. Government House correspondent Good Luck in Nine reports that it is to also create an efficient and equitable framework for infrastructure development in Edo State to facilitate faster economic growth and create jobs. The six new executive orders were signed by Governor Obaseki 
and supervised by the Solicitor General of the State, Professor Faith Osadolo. It is to promote sustainable and inclusive non-intensive agricultural practices to enhance food security, improve livelihoods, and for economic growth and development. Order 5. Six, to establish presumptive tax regulations for small businesses and exempt businesses earnings less than 30,000 naira minimum will be exempted from income tax and executive, while Order 6 is to define grievance redress mechanism for a structure to address issues and complaints. All of these orders are geared towards diversifying our economy. I have preached over the years that the era of relying on revenues from crude oil sales is over and that the future is about how we get our citizens to now invest in our economy. Managing Director at the State Investment Promotion Office, Mr. Kevin OYB, speaks on its significance. Your Excellency, these orders meet your vision of making Edo State the preferred investment destination and a place to live and work by 2050 through the state 30-year master plan. Hopefully, the new executive orders will be transmitted into laws to boost local and foreign investments in Edo. In Benin, good luck in Aini, NT News. Traditional rulers have been urged to build bridges of harmony and peaceful coexistence among the people under their watch. Deputy Governor Philip Shaibu made the call in EU coup. Dairi Isako West, local government area of Edo State, during the installation of the village head of the community, Zekeri Bawa Adururu II. The installation of the new leader of EU coup Zaire community was a memorable event which symbolizes the passing of the torch to a new leader, Zaiki Okuluregbe of Iyuku, Zaikari Bawa Adoruru II. Deputy Governor Philip Shaibu emphasized the vital role of traditional rulers in fostering unity among their people. Recognizing their intrinsic link between harmony and development, the Deputy Governor stressed that progress can only flourish in an atmosphere devoid of rancor and distrust. He called on the new traditional ruler to embrace the unique qualities of his people and utilize his position to harness the strength that arises from their diversity and shared brotherhood. The newly appointed village head expressed his deep appreciation to Philip Shaibu for gracing the occasion he assured to prioritize the welfare of his people and to work tirelessly for their peace and development. Deputy Governor congratulated the royal father and the people of Iyuko in Benin. Joy Igbo, NTA News. And that's it from Benin. Ogotrika Ona is in Abuja for the continuation of Nationwide. Ogo. Thank you very much, Obehi. Now, while the sudden passing of former Governor of Ondo State, Rutimi Akeridolu, remains shocking and unexpected, it cannot diminish his stature or rob the nation of his memories as a visionary leader. Nigeria's First Lady, Oluremi Tinubu, expressed this view when she paid her condolence visit to the widow of the deceased at his Eleele residence in Ibadan. State House correspondent Adeni Itaiwo has details. Just as it is for joyous occasions, tragic moments also bring people together to share in the grief of others, offer needed support and solace. That is the mission of Nigeria's first lady, Uruemi Tinubu, to the Ibadan residence of former governor of Ondo State, late Rotimi Akeridulu, where she condoled with his widow, Betty Akeridulu, and other family members. She was accompanied on the visit by wife of the vice president, Nana Shetima, and some state governor's wives. With the death of Akere Dulu, the first lady says Nigeria has lost one of her best. But she was quick to remind his family to take comfort in the knowledge that the former governor lived an impactful life that shaped the turn of events at critical times in the life of the nation. He has done his best. He was a great 
brave man, loved by my family, loved by my husband, respected by my husband. We can only wish that the legacy is left behind can continue and it endures. And I wish the wife, the children, grandchildren and the family, immediate family, uh, that God should comfort them and also uh, ease their pains. Thanking the First Lady, Hannah Entourage, for the visit on behalf of his family, brother of the deceased, Professor Oluwole Akredilu says, the family is comforted by the show of love at a time of grief. Like uh, the wife of the president said, you don't have much to say. All we need to just say is just thank you. Mm. And that you are promised to stand by us and by our mother, our wife here. The Lord will stand with you too. The First Lady's visit is a follow-up to a statement personally signed by her mourning the death of Arakunri Akiridulu, who died on December 27 this year in Ibadan. Adeni Itaiwo, NTA News. The Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, says three of its stars along Meduguri Damaturu power line have been destroyed by explosives. This is coming barely a week after two towers along Gombe Damaturu transmission line were vandalized and disrupted power supply in Yobe and Borno states. In a statement, TCN states that the incident also cost the life of personnel of Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps. NSCDC. TCN commiserates with the family of the deceased and the NSCDC for the sad and shocking incident. The 38th edition of the National Quranic Recitation Competition has ended peacefully in Damaturu, the Yobe State Capital, with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu advocating improvement in quality and quantity in the number of Islamia schools across the country for Quranic recitation and memorization to grow from strength to strength. Yunusa Suleiman reports. One week. 248 combined participants from 34 states of the Federation and FCT Abuja clearly contested in six different categories of the competition, exhibiting their prowess and mastery in recitation and memorization of the glorious Quran before a panel of judges saddled with the responsibility of assessing their performance. At the end of the week-long contest, in the male first category of the memorization of the whole Quran with tafsir and different modes of recitation, a 22-year-old Ibrahim Mohammed Nasser from Bochi State emerged winner after scoring 82.7% to defeat other contestants while in the females category. Zainab Ali Mohammed from Kano State becomes the overall winner with 85.4%. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu represented who underscores the importance of Quranic recitation and memorization to Muslims also calls for the establishment of Quranic recitation laboratories in the country where the science of recitation can be taught among Quranic students for better performance. I would like to congratulate the winners, but in Quranic recitation there is no loser. Everybody is, is a winner. I would like to urge all of us to redouble our efforts to take this Islamic knowledge across the length and breadth of the world. The overall winners of the first category were presented with five million naira each, plus cars among other prizes, courtesy of Yobe State Government, and are expected to represent Nigeria in the competition at the international level. In the matter, Yunusa Suleiman, NTA News. President Bolat Ahmed Tinubu has commended the contribution and sacrifices of officers and soldiers of Guards Brigade for ensuring a safe and secure federal capital territory. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the president said this in a message delivered by the Minister of State for Defense, Mohamed Bello, at the 2023 Guards Brigade West African Social Activities in Abuja. <laughs> It's the 2023 Gas Brigade West African Social Activities, WASA, an annual event organized by the Nigerian Army to celebrate the diverse cultures of Nigeria. <laughs> Devoid of much regimentation, the social activities brought together officers, soldiers, and their families in a relaxed atmosphere to celebrate the end of a successful year and honor dedication to service. The diversity of experience, skill, and talent of officers and soldiers of the brigade 
is an asset to the Nigerian army and indeed the nation at large. I believe that your dedication to duty will encourage and motivate other soldiers elsewhere to emulate their extraordinary effort. To the Commander Gas Brigade, the force will continue to partner with whose communities for better security surveillance. We have been working very hard to ensure that we counter all those challenges around, especially those around Buari, Abaji, and Kuji area councils. The Defense Minister donated a car to support the 2023 WASA, and Mariam Ibrahim won the grand prize of a car also donated by the minister. I feel happy because I will give my mother the car. The gas brigade is vested with the responsibility of protecting the president and his family, the federal capital territory and environs. Ismail Musa, NTA News. It's the season of sweetness in Calabar, and uh, our correspondent Ekemini has been there at the carnival and has an update for us from that end. Hello, Ekemini. Was the Calabar Carnival like today, and what are the activities going on? Hello, hello to you, Ogotchukuka. Good to get to hear from you. I mean, first off, I would love to say uh, Happy New Year in advance. And although you're not here presently, but I do hope somehow you find a way to tap into the season of sweetness, you know, which of course has been the theme or is the theme for the Christmas festivities here in Calabar. Uh, I mean, from uh, the beautiful street parties, the concerts that hosted top celebrities, and up to uh, the grants that was launched for the less uh, privileged here in Cross River State. And then yesterday, the dance of masquerade called Yorick Bay uh, has been one word to describe the activities here in Calabar for th the last 31 days is bliss. I know you'll be wondering why are you here uh, at the Millennium Park. This is at the Millennium Park. It looks like nothing is happening here, but trust me, this place is quite symbolic. Symbolic to the festivities in Cross River State, the Christmas festivities, not just for 2023, but of course, you know, many other Christmas celebrations that has held here in Calabar. Right here, uh, you can see a Christmas tree right behind me on the first day of December. This is where the flag of for the Christmas festivities in Calabar took place. And tonight, this is where goodbye to 2023 will be done. And of course, goodbye to the festivities in Cross River State. It's going to be marked by a blast of fireworks, uh, screams, and uh, prayer, singing, and just joyous moments and wishes for the 2024, uh, 2024 year coming in. And of course, thereafter, uh, a Thanksgiving service. So uh, it's just a moment for we've been here for it. And of course, uh, I hope you tap into the more, uh, tap into the season because I have tapped into the season of sweetness. Ogotchuku. Emily, we hope it will uplift the standard in uh, Calabar and, of course, the nation in general. And now, our report just reaching us indicates that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu will make a New Year's Day broadcast today. Uh, that is January 1st. Uh, tomorrow, that is uh, Monday, January 1st, 2024, at 7 a.m. Television, radio stations, and other electronic media outlets are enjoined to hook up to the network services of the Nigerian Television Authority and the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria for the broadcasts. All right, uh, we now go over for sports updates. All right, that's nationwide today, the last day in 2023. Remember to stay safe as you enter the next year.